Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, pa- my my buddy, my friend, Pastor Schomberger is back. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. Good. Um, so whenever whenever you hang out with me on the Drive to School, we, we, we do the wrong questions um, because it, it's one of those really important places where uh, you get to confront that, that thing you learned as a child. There are no stupid <laughs> questions. You can say, absolutely, there are stupid questions. Um, right. <laughs> Because if you ask a question that, that's targeted at the wrong thing, you're never going to get the right answer asking the wrong questions. And right. and so sometimes we need to maybe start with with what you really mean and unpack it a little bit. Uh, but what I really mean to say is, is, hey, pastor, is there a wrong way to do church? What's the right way to do church? Well, um, again, you know, when we say stupid <laughs> question, let me just back up just a second. Yeah, we all understand it because we're all doing the same thing, right? Right. We're all asking these same questions naturally, and by that I just mean in our sinful flesh, right? We're always mm-hmm. going to make whatever it is about us. I'm right. going to make it about me. When I read the Bible, I'm going to make it about me. When I'm okay. in a church service, I'm going to first be making it about me, and that is in my sinful flesh. I am. Right. So that's, that's, that's why how I old Adam was curved in. Repentance life. I'm inwardly curved, right? Right. That's so that's going to the change then the right way to do church uh, immediately because it's going to be Correct. like, what is it that, that sort of catches my attention or makes me makes me entertained or makes me happy or even just sort of makes me feel spiritually fulfilled? Um, but that might not be the best thing in the world because the things in the world that feel the best to me, God always says, thou shalt not in front of them. Um, and I don't really know about all that. So so help me out then. Well, um, so doing church, what we need to ask is who's doing the doing uh, Ooh, in, in church, uh, it, meaning who's, who's running things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, and, and with that, we're talking about a service, a worship service. Uh, and if we're speaking carefully, we call it the divine service. Uh, and that answers the question for us. Yeah. Because with, when we say divine service, we're saying it's, the divine God, God himself, who's serving. And it doesn't mean that there's not a, a place for us to give thanksgiving, to give thanks, to serve one another at the end, but uh, and to serve God back, to give extol and, and uh, give thanks for his gifts. But when you say, how, how do you do church right? Well, why that's not helpful is because you don't do church. Don't do church. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. Yeah, where Jesus is, there's the church. So it's really Jesus where he's doing what he does, which is gathering and calling sinners to himself. Uh, okay. There's the church. That's how we confess it. Because it's how the so I can gives say it. there's a wrong way to do church because if, that, if I'm going to make it about me and what I'm doing, yeah. that's that wrong. But if, if it's, I'm saying, is there a right way to do church? Well, you, you receive at church. And if you're going to make yourself the primary doer, that's, that's going to mess it up. But that's going to change a whole lot of other stuff kind of from there too, then, because, you know, I think everybody sort of has this, this understanding of, you know, what the, the perfect church service is like, you know what I mean? And, and when we say, you know, what's the, the right way to do church, I always sort of have, like you said, I have me in mind. I have that, that yeah. one memory of, of, you know, my, my first Christmas Eve service as a, as a Christian, I have that, that memory of, of a chapel in, in seminary where there's like 400 guys all singing in parts and the, the liturgy is done just proper. And, and I am sure God is pleased. Uh, but it's always about me, isn't it? <laughs> sure. And, and I don't know that there's a way for us, you know, uh, while we're in sinful flesh to get away from that kind of thinking. And and the flip mm-hmm. side of it, to be fair, there are times where it's like, man, that wasn't that awesome when we, yeah. uh, like I think about a, a couple of higher things conferences, you know, where there's a whole group of people together singing, uh, you know, we praise you and acknowledge you, or we're having matins together uh, and, and hearing this. And see, or, or, at, or at Fort Wayne, at the, I was thinking of my time in seminary, the chapel. Where there's nothing wrong with like sort of saying, weren't these great moments? As long as we don't put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh, right. And we realize that, you know what, churches where two or more are gathered and who's gathering Jesus is gathering us. Where is he gathering us? To his name. There am I, Matthew 18 says, in their midst. That that's right. that's how he does church. He calls sinners to the place of his name, which is the certainty, uh, the place of certainty of his promise and his gifts. 
Right. And there, there he forgives our sins. There he ties us to life everlasting. And that, that forgiveness has the very, the very same thing in common with, with Jesus presence that, that makes the whole thing so frustrating and that I can't see either of them. Um, like I can't see, you know, the the Holy spirit or, or, or the second person of the Trinity present in, in, in presence in the, the, the supper. Um, I cannot Mm -hmm. see the forgiveness of sins when I look at myself in the mirror. And so, um, I think the things that, that might be maybe the most helpful are the things that point to the fact that Jesus is present. there doing all the work in the first place. Um, and, and that's where we can sort of talk about liturgy um, in, in a meaningful way. It, it doesn't sort of forgive your sins extra if you chant it, but it might make it a little bit easier to see something special is happening when you talk in a unique way. Yeah, no, um, and, and and that's that's really the right right uh, way to frame that is what things are uh, are being done, and and really what like just the simplicity of. Uh, where how how does Jesus forgive our sins? How does He serve us? Well, through the gospel and the sacraments, and so where those are going on, there's the church, uh, and you know there are effects of those which can be really emotional, right? Like you you've uh, been at the Lord's table where you're serving, uh, uh, you know, the Lord's body and blood, and you're seeing all these different emotional yeah. responses. I think you you mentioned one time uh, when you were out here that you like watching that only because it's so encouraging just to see just the different ways that people are being gathered there to the place where Jesus is is giving this forgiveness out, handing it out literally and putting it in people's mouths. So that, I mean, there is going to be emotion, but it's not a coerced emotion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And, and it's it's not less true if you don't happen to feel it in that particular moment. One hundred percent. And it's I think that's where we, that's that. kind of where things go. And that's where our temptation always towards enthusiasm is because right. we we do we, we are emotional people <laughs> and we like the emotion. I love emotion. I'm a musician. You know, I love this stuff. Yeah. But, but it's not bad. God gave us emotion. It's just the compass doesn't always point true north anymore since absolutely. the fall. Absolutely. Right. <sighs> That, that sort of is going to change it then, um, because like when I say, what is, is there a right way to do church? I, I always mean, what is it that that feels good? Um, but but the right way to do church is, is where Jesus does church to forgive your sins. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are better things to do in church because you want to lean into the things that that are, are Christ's work and the things that point to his work. Um, but that that also sort of frees you from having to feel your way to heaven. Um, mm-hmm. That that's good because there there's been. There have been some weeks where I've just been pretty bored in church. Sure. You know? Well, I, well and, and the, you'd mentioned before the unseen, like mm-hmm. like sort of the things we're talking about, like you're talking about experiences. Those are things we saw and we experienced, right? But what's really going on, it, it, Jesus tells us to hang on to what he says, you know, which are his words. Because the, the certainty uh, isn't in my emotion. We all know that from our experience, right? Right. In, my emotions in a, in an hour change, you know, I, I was happy a second ago and now I'm sad and now I'm confused and, you know, we're, we're nuts, all of us. Uh, yeah. It's a different, you know, in different ways yeah. uh, as far as our, our emotions go, but the certainty is always in the word, the word, the word, the word, um, you know, the word of the Lord stands forever, the scriptures say. That that's right. our hope. And so in the service, how do you how does Jesus serve us with the word, the word, the word, the word? It's preached, it's sung, it's confessed, it's spoken back, which is the word confess means the same word, right? Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 spoken to us with the bread and the wine and with the water the word. So if that's there and it's faithful, can I, can I just take a breath and, and relax a little bit then? Yeah. Yeah, I awesome. can. Yeah. That's the breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Faith can sigh, right? <laughs> like, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. That's, that's helpful. Pastor, thanks so much for hanging out today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me. We'll have you again soon. Take care. Cool. See ya.